What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ask a P. My name is Ryan Williams. I also go by at Ryry Security Guy, and I want to answer your questions. So last week I asked, I posed a question like, hey, I'm a CISP. I have uh, almost two decades of experience. What, what are your questions? Um, so I received one, I answered it. And this week uh, I received four more. So I wanna answer those as well from people who are either looking to join cybersecurity or looking to move up from uh, whatever IT position that they currently have into doing something else in cybersecurity. So remember, you can ask your questions uh, either at me, uh, Again, I'm Rai Rai Security Guy on LinkedIn, Twitter, Clubhouse, IG, and TikTok, but you can also send me a message either on LinkedIn, where you probably found this video, or Facebook, uh, in our The Other Side of the Firewall uh, uh, Facebook group. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube, which I hope, also hope you found this video on YouTube. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit the bell. If you're on a different platform, whatever will allow you to be notified that made a new video um, so I can answer your questions. So first question comes from Eli. So Eli asks, I'm curious to know how much is covered in the certifications that an MS and cybersecurity really uh, overlooks or doesn't cover. I'm trying to get into more cybersecurity roles such as security analyst or cybersecurity risk management framework and policies. I can't seem to make a case appealing enough for interviewers to pick me over candidates with certs. Any feedback would be appreciated. Uh, well, Eli, uh, I already answered your question uh, uh, through LinkedIn. However, I thought this was a good one to put out here uh, to the rest of the crowd, because there are a lot of people who have way more practical experience than they have certifications. Uh, I believe practical experience trumps certifications as well as a degree. Uh, however, um, I had the practical experience, I was pursuing the degree, and with the degree came the certifications. So I think the trifecta makes you the perfect candidate. However, again, practical experience out of the three, out of that triad, I believe is paramount. So continue to sharpen your skills, continue to um, work hard at your cybersecurity job or your IT job and uh, work on the education as well. Um, so I see you're pursuing your, your, your bachelor's from my alma mater, WGU. They don't pay me to say that, but they're a great school. Um, I know through their program, most likely you will be earning certifications. Uh, and then if you decide to go the MS route, you also learn, or you also earn your, uh, your CEH, so you're a certified ethical hacker. And then you can either take, at this time anyway, take their in-house CHFI or computer hacking forensics investigator, or um, you can take the actual CHFI and then that could be used um, to pass one of your classes. Um, their master's program, the backbone is the CISP CBK. So uh, before I completed my master's, I felt confident enough with my practical experience, as well as what they had taught me so far in the program to take the CISP and pass it. And I did. I did not pass it the first time. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I did. However, um, I was fortunate enough to be extended two vouchers and I passed it my second time. So all the above. So yes, I think you can be hired on your practical experience, but I can see employers focusing on certifications because it's just easier. It takes a snapshot of that uh, uh, potential employee and it shows that they have the practical experience or at least enough of the practical experience and the time to sit for uh, a, a, an exam based upon practical experience and book knowledge. So like having a CISP, obviously high demand, but uh, so is SEC plus, so is CASP, so are CEH, CHFI, like um, you don't have to jump uh, immediately to CISP, obviously stepping stones, building blocks to get there. That was definitely my path. And then uh, obviously uh, I was able to complete my CISP before completing my, my master's. So I still had to say, um, it is gonna be kind of tough without the certifications, but I know plenty of people who have uh, made that leap and then earned their certs while on the job. So continue to, uh, to apply yourself and then continue to pursue um, certifications at the appropriate level. And I think you'd be just fine. So next question comes from, 
Ike. So Ike Phillip, he asks, in your opinion, what's the best way to transition from help desk into cybersecurity position? So Ike, um, I see that you have an extensive help desk um, level of experience, like client, when it comes to client systems, network infrastructure, Active Directory, like you're all over it. So it shows that your company allows you to dabble, like you, you're able to uh, have some latitude in, uh, in what tickets uh, you're pursuing and closing. Uh, I will look for sponsorship within your uh, either vulnerability management or or vulnerability assessment or patch management uh, work centers or whatever the equivalent is for the company that you work at. Uh, I would ask to work on their tickets as well to build that practical experience to uh, learn from someone who's already in that field. If you have that latitude, if not, um, then I would say go the Sec Plus CCNA security route, uh, brush up on those skills, get that book knowledge, and then ask them to use it uh, in a practical way. So with what you currently have, if you pursue a Sec Plus or a, a CCNA security or um, a CEH or something like that, I think you'd be just fine. Um, you, you're definitely killing it when it comes to the help desk portion of it. So I think you'll be good to go. So next is, uh, I have a question from Stephanie. So she asks, what's the best thing to get slash do to get a first IT job in cybersecurity without an IT background? Practical experience, certs, education, or something else? Uh, so the answer is all of the above, Stephanie. And it's not a cop out. Uh, again, practical experience, I believe, is uh, paramount. I believe it trumps the other three. However, uh, continue to pursue uh, certification and or uh, get an associate or bachelor's in a field you are passionate uh, about. So it just makes things just that much easier, right? So I see that you already completed a pretty extensive boot camp. Uh, use that knowledge to pursue the applicable certs that they were trying to get at, like maybe Sec Plus, like I said, or CCA Security or something like that. Uh, I also see that you have some crazy linguistic skills. So uh, think outside the box. Think how you can use those skills with either your company or another company to say, hey, I, I understand the language of IT and I'm also fluent in Mandarin. Like that should be... Uh, uh, you should give you you should be a shoe in for a, a lot of different things. Maybe it'll be translation. Maybe it'll be um, some sort of uh, job in writing um, because transcription is pretty pretty important. Um, I think you'll be just fine, and I think you jumping into cyber is a is a good move, uh, especially if you have the aptitude to do it, which it seems like you do. So you'll be you'll be good to go. Uh, and then the last question comes from Carlos. So Carlos asks. Uh, I'm looking to get into networking and uh, security, working on my CCNA now, any suggestions? So A, CCNA is uh, near and dear to my heart. So my first job in the military was network infrastructure. Uh, I started out Net Plus, then Sec Plus, then I got my CCNA. Um, and then from there, I, I just got passionate about security when it, uh, you know, coming, working on ACOs and port security, moving my way to Cisco uh, ICE. Um, and then just seeing all the benefits and all of the, uh, the cool stuff that cybersecurity had to offer. I just became pa more passionate about cybersecurity and just kept moving up the chain. Uh, I think your path is, is great. Continue to pursue your CCNA. CCNA is a lot different than when I, when I got mine back in 2014, 2015. It was all about the command line. So CLI was, was king. Uh, now that I've restarted my CCNA, I see that they're going more into the uh, automation and assurance side of the house. Uh, when it comes to uh, application security, like Cisco is doing some amazing things. So I say all that to say that your CCNA will bring a springboard to get you uh, into cybersecurity. So I think you'll do great. Uh, so with all that being said, please, please, please ask your questions, keep them coming in. Either you can reply back to this post on LinkedIn or on Facebook. Uh, YouTube on the video, or you can reach me at Rai Rai Security Guy. That's R Y R Y uh, Security Guy on LinkedIn, Twitter, Clubhouse, IG, and TikTok. So I'm all over the place. So feel free to ask your questions and um, I'll keep answering them. So I appreciate it. So that's it for uh, this episode of Ask Assist P. Stay safe, stay secure. Peace.